ಇಂಟ್ಯೂಶು ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಂಕರಾಸ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಂಗೊಳ್ಳಿ ಡಿ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ನಮಃ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ದಂಬೆ ಪುಣಚ ಬಂಟ್ವಾಳ ತಾಲೂಕು ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಕನ್ನಡ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಭಾರತ ಶಂಕರಾಸ್ ಭಾಷ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಲೋನ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡಿಟರ್ಮಿನ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಟುಡೆ ನಾವು ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿ ಡಿಟರ್ಮಿನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅಥಾರಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ದಿ ಜೆನ್ಯೂನ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಆಫ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಪ್ರೊಪೌಂಡೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟ್ರೂ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇನ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನಲ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ ಸೀಕರ್ ಆರ್ ಆಸ್ಪಿರೆಂಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಡೆಲಿಬರೇಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನತ್ರಯ ಭಾಷ್ಯಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ನಾಲೆಜ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಮೆನಿ ಆಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಬೀನ್ ಆಥರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಈವನ್ ದೆನ್ ಹೀ ಶುಡ್ ಗೀವ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೂತ್ರ ಭಾಷ್ಯಾಸ್ ever and above all as the supreme authority for the purposes of judging and then utilize the other two bhashya teachings so as not to be in conflict with or contradiction to the former conclusions for sutra bhashya is evidently a nyaya prasthana or an edifying and extremely rational and logical approach to wit it is a bhashya or explanatory commentary which has been undertaken with the prime and sublime purport of determining the upanishadic teachings after discerning the genuine interpretations of the vedanta vakyas or upanishadic sentences based on select <coughs> nyayas selected nyayas or axioms this in itself is a profound uh, pedagogic method a highly esoteric one at that uh, of training imparted to only those who are properly qualified for it and fully equipped psychically and morally to boot <coughs> in other words it should be treated as more sacrosanct and uh, systematic indeed next question the rest of the acharyas to have declared that their respective commentaries have been formulated with a view to determining the vedantic siddhanta alone on the strength of dialectics is it not in that case why should we opt for shri shankara's school for philosophy school of philosophy with such bias in this regard this is a 12th question how to answer this the other acharyas present before the aspirants at the outset those pramanas or authoritative sources which they have acknowledged then they enforce constraints on the aspirants asking them to accept wholeheartedly that the upanishadic sentences are in the main the most authoritative ones among all pramanas as they are apaurshaya or not of human origin but of divine dispensation further they have accepted only those yuktis or dialectical uh, devices in keeping with the upanishadic sentences in this regard they undertake to refute the opinions of the followers of other rival schools of philosophy on the strength of vakya pramana or upanishadic statements or sentences as being sacrosanct as also yuktis in consonance with them thus those various bhashyakaras keep on quarreling among themselves opposing one another by forwarding various pramana vakyas as well as yuktis not only are those schools of philosophy opposed to one another but also the methods adopted by them for the purpose of refuting shri shankaracharya's methodology as envisaged in his extant bhashyas are also different in each case it being so since all these rival schools of philosophy have altogether uh, pile up numerous hurdles and uh, <coughs> hindrances in the matter of path of systematization equitable and rational of vedantic siddhanta and have unwittingly contributed to the rampant confusion with regard to the burning question which is the true methodology adopted in and through the upanishadic lore it becomes quite evident that their mutually contradictory bhashyas are not at all helpful in arriving at a convincing solution of the present problem the 13th question 
in that case because sri shankaracharya's bhasha two are neither and in a, in a agreement with any other bhasha nor are acceptable to the rest of the commentators it is tantamount to saying that the siddhanta acknowledged to be that of sri shankara also is rendered unacceptable universally indeed then what special merit can it profess to have or claim answer it has to be emphasized that sri shankaracharya has reiterated that while the purport of the upanishadic teachings is being determined not only the sentences of the shruti upanishads and uh, such other canonical texts but also everyone's anubhava or intuitive experience should be treated as a valid means of determination or proof or pramana further he has accepted the subtle but unfamiliar truth that any pramana or valid means of knowledge whatever it be should necessarily engender the anubhava or correct knowledge of its exclusive object prameya and then and then alone it is fit to be accepted as a genuine pramana therefore it amounts to saying that that spiritual teaching alone which has been founded on the support and strength of the universal that is everyone's anubhava not individual experience becomes eligible to be called the universally acknowledged siddhanta and not otherwise that is the speciality of shankara 14th question <clears throat> when anubhava too differs from person to person what special significance can be adduced to anubhava because anubhava which is different for different persons is essentially vyaktik or individualistic such anubhava being rendered indeterminate or uncertain in true indeed for example it cannot be guaranteed that the dream that one person has experienced can be experienced by another but the sarvatrik anubhava or the universal intuitive experience which is exclusively granted by divine dispensation to all human beings everywhere and at all periods of time without any exception whatsoever of having the dream experience in general is uniquely one and the same and hence universal and further because it exists without any restrictions imposed by time space or any other object or uh, entity whatsoever there can never arise any dispute or controversy whatsoever about that universal experience or anubhava therefore everyone irrespective of his personal affinity towards or conviction about a particular school of philosophy will have to perforce acknowledge the siddhanta in accordance with the shruti upanishads and anubhava intuitive experience which is universal and inviolable inviolably true and convincing which this great acharya has propounded in and through this bhash his bhashyas which are fortunately for all of us extant intact and readily available <clears throat> next question 15th if so how come there have arisen so many different op- opinions with regard to shri shankaracharya siddhanta because of the reason that it has given rise to so many controversies you two are advocating for determining as to what exactly in his vedantic teaching is his vedantic teaching is it not true total negligence of the fact that for his methodology prasthana the one prime support and foundation is sarvatrik anubhava alone by these disputants is the one prime cause for giving rise to many different interpretations and uh, opinions about sri shankara's methodology therefore first and foremost we have to determine whether sri shankara has in the truth relied for the purposes of formulating his unique siddhanta solely and exclusively on the firm and founding support of sarvatrik anubhava even if it is so how is it that till today this para amount of truth that uh, has not dawned on the minds of the disputants is another question which we have now to thoroughly examine only then we will be able to determine once for all without giving any room for doubt or misunderstanding as to what exactly is the essential nature and feature of this siddhanta which is fully in consonance with the universal intuitive experience anubhava next 16th point question if it is true that sri shankara has primarily and unequivocally advocated the importance of sarvatrika anubhava alone how can it be explained that he just like the rest of the acharyas or spiritual percept- preceptors has been 
championing the concept that for the intuitive knowledge jnana of the ultimate reality of brahman or atman paramartha tattva the validity pramanya of the vedanta shastra alone is the true means of knowledge where was the necessity for him to write his own differing bhashya to the principal upanishads and uh, what is the reason for his attempt in uh, writing side by side bhashyas on the gita and the brahma sutras <coughs> answer the rest of the vrittikaras commentators had not acknowledged the hard truth that in the upanishads it has been one pointedly taught as their ultimate purport that atma jnana self knowledge or self realization is attained by means of anubhava intuitive experience alone therefore it becomes evident that the upanishadic sentences do not become pramana valid means of knowledge merely on the solitary ground of their being sentences under the circumstances it became quite necessary for shri shankara to stress with all the power and uh, perspicacity at his command that for rightly interpreting and imbibing the subtle purport behind those esoteric sentences in the upanishads in tissue experience anubhava too is essentially and inevitable essential and inevitable it also became equally necessary for him to write his upanishadic bhashya so as to be acceptable to all vedantins second point in the bhagavad gita the quintessence of the meaning and purport of the vedantas upanishads alone is presented in order to expound that in the gita to tattva jnana has been enunciated with the aid of yuktis logical devices in consonance with anubhava alone as well as its corollary that in the gita spiritual disciplines and practices sadhanas in consonance with the above tenet have been taught Sri Shankara was compelled so to speak to write his bhashya similarly in order to determine the, and uh, demonstrate as to how can one discern the truth that for the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita uh, this very prime purport is common on the strength of dialectics yuktis he had to write his sutra bhashyas for many commentators prior to and contemporaneous contemporaneous with uh, Sri Shankara had written there respective commentaries vrittis to demonstrate that both the upanishads and the bhagavad gita the uh, jnana that is taught is essentially upa, uh, upasana rupa or of the form or nature of mental meditation alone in such a confused and chaotic state of affairs in vedantic circles it became all the more important and expedient to refute their erroneous tenets and to establish the truth on the un- uh, unflinching and fundamental strength of logical devices fully in consonance with universal intuitive experience anubhava which is absolute beyond the realm of the senses and the mind on the uh, one hand and outside the purview of time space causation categories on the other that in the upanishads it has been propounded that jnana or atma vastu or the intuitive knowledge of the reality of the self a pure consciousness alone is the hetu or means in its ultimate purport or perspective for parama purushartha or the final ultimate destination beatitude of all human existence and endeavor and as a secondary teaching that for the sake of the middle or low grade aspirants both the psychic meditations upasanas and the physical rites and rituals karmas have been enunciated in the shastras so that is the answer next 17th question in that case it is tantamount to saying that because of the reason that shri shankara has demonstrated the truth that vedantic sentences must and should be in consonance with yukti and anubhava shastra is rendered to be merely anu, um, anuvadaka or explanatory repetition or reference to what is already uh, mentioned to which it is analogous to to witness it is analogous to any portion of that brahmana which comments on illustrates or explains in detail a vidhi or direction or stipulation previously laid down and which does not itself lay down any new directions or stipulations in other words it is corroborative in nature and not by itself independently a pramana is it not answer because the vedanta shastra by itself instructs or propounds that para brahman or the ultimate reality of brahman atman which is the really real or transcendental truth of all existence can be intuited or cognized by uh, both by means of anubhava sarvatrik anubhava and yukti in consonance with this universal anubhava 
ಇಟ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಎಲೋನ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ಲೂಸಿವ್ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ವಿತ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮತತ್ವ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಎಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರ ಆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪ್ಲಿಫೈಡ್ ಆರ್ ಇಲ್ಲಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ವೈಯಕ್ತಿಕ ಆರ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಯುಕ್ತೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅನುಭವಾಸ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ಫುಲಿ ಇಂಡೀಡ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಸಾರ್ವತ್ರಿಕ ಯುಕ್ತೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನುಭವಾಸ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟ್ಯೂಶಿಯಲ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಟು ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಸೋಟೆರಿಕ್ ಸುಪ್ರಾ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ವೇರಿಯಬಲಿ ಗೋಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಡ್ಯುವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಎಂಪ್ರಿಕಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಚುವಲ್ ಆರ್ ಐಡಿಯಾಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಡ್ಯುವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನ್ಸರ್ಟೈಂಟೀಸ್ ಇಂಡೀಡ್ ದರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಬೈ ದೀಸ್ ಫಾಲೇಷಿಯಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾಲಿಬಲ್ arguments or doubts raised by the opponents there is no danger or harm or whatsoever posed to this shastras pramanya or validity or authority as a canonical text in fact is it not true that because all pramanas of knowledge give rise to an intuitive knowledge anubhava of their respective objects or phenomena quite spontaneously and as the later are entities in s yathartha in a sense they are called pramanas is it not besides because of the paramount reason that shri shankara has proved beyond doubt in his commentary uh, bristling with the mass of sutras or aphorisms called vedanta mimamsa shastra that all the vedantas or upanishads have the ultimate purport tatparya of bringing about the final intuition uh, fruition of uh, atmaikatva jnana or the unitary integral or plenary, plenary intuitive experience of the self as pure non dual consciousness and in addition the sentences which teach upasanas are also having the parama tatparya or the final culmination in that very jnana in the ultimate analysis it becomes evident that shastra pramanya is established on a sound and steadfast foundation <coughs> so here we end the fifth session <coughs> so we have seen 17 questions here next we will continue with the 18th question in the next session hare rama shri shri gangulli db charanaravinda arpitamastu shri shri sachidananda indra saraswati charanaravinda arpitamastu shri shankara arpitamastu sarve jana sukhino bhavantu om tat sat lokas samasta sukhino bhavantu